Hey guys! Today we're going to be talking about how to pick your UChicago classes or just kind of college classes and college like four-year plan in general. So I just finished my second year at UChicago so of course my next two years is still going to depend on my future decisions but I'm just going to be talking mainly about how to pick your first year classes because I know a lot of my viewers are either incoming freshmen or you're a freshman or you're someone who wants to apply to UChicago and just kind of want a little bit more insight on their progress. So today we're going to be talking about everything related to UChicago classes. Now before we get started I just want to explain to a few of you that UChicago does have a core and this core will probably take up around 30% of the classes or well, maybe a little bit less of all the classes you will take at UChicago and the core consists of seven parts that I'll put on the screen and honestly I personally quite like the core but it's quite polarizing but I would say most people who come to UChicago know about it and we all kind of like the core. Um, of course there are specific subjects or specific classes that we will not like as much as others but for me so far my experience with the core has been really really good so I'll be going over some of my favorite classes as well as just how I put my first year plan together. As a first year I know a lot of you might be quite inclined to just like you know jump directly into your major classes and you just want to get the core out of the way as fast as possible but let me assure you that if you leave the more difficult parts of the core till your later years you're going to regret it because you're going to be taking much more difficult major classes alongside more difficult parts of the core and so the way I did it was I looked at the core and I figured out which parts I was going to be struggling the most with so for me personally that was going to be bio because I haven't taken bio since eighth grade in like late middle school and I've heard terrible things about core bio at UChicago it really isn't that bad apparently but I just heard a lot of horror stories about it and so I definitely wanted to get bio out of the way and of course I want to get math out of the way just because math is such a prerequisite for so many different classes no matter what major you're in. And then I decided to do Hume and Soch together. Now this is sometimes a controversial decision because some people say, oh, don't do Hume and Soch together unless you have a really strong like reading ability or writing ability. And I would say the reading part is definitely true, but depending on which Hume and which Soch you pick, I feel like you could structure your classes in a way that is just quite friendly to you. My first class that I added was Reading Cultures Hume, Huma 140, and I actually put reading cultures as my fourth or fifth choice when I was pre-registering so I did not get my first like four choices which were all philosophical perspectives specifically by this professor called Barrison that I've heard amazing things about and I was so upset that I didn't get his class. However, looking back now, it probably was a better choice for me not to get philosophical perspectives just because my SOCH, which is SOCH 114, is Power, Identity, and Resistance. And that is a very reading intensive class and so is philosophical perspectives and so usually this is the pairing that people tell you not to put together but you know I just wanted to challenge myself and get it out of the way and more importantly I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a policy major and so I figured having Soch and Hume together in this particular combination would just give me a bit of insight and it worked because now I no longer want to be a poli sci major. The reason why I ended up really enjoying reading cultures is because the class is structured in terms of novel so it's much more similar to the type of format I did in high school which is we would read a book per month or a book every half a month or so and then we'll read it and then discuss it in class go back and read it a bit more discuss it in class. Now my favorite part about the class was my professor was really just like helpful and kind and she was really nice but I did feel that I didn't learn as much in the class because it was very discussion driven and so it's very dependent on what ideas are being thrown out by my classmates so I feel like I didn't absorb as much information but I mean it was a relatively easy class for me. Um, I mean I got an A all three quarters and the writing was much more similar to high school writing so you know like five paragraphs very structured, AREA, assertion, reasoning, evidence, analysis structured. So I feel like reading cultures for my specific professor was just very useful for me to kind of glide into college. It was a very good transition class. However, that's not the same for every class because if you look at my SOCH class, I was taught by three different professors all three quarters and their writing standards varied greatly. Like the first professor I think really wanted that five paragraph essay structure, the second professor did not like that at all and wanted instead a more like problem solution which is a slightly more advanced essay writing structure which is more like focusing on arguments and proofs. And then the last professor was super chill and honestly he was my favorite because he gave us so much information, added new books to the curriculum, and yet the class was also more fun and writing the essays actually seemed more 
fun. So first we're going to go over how to choose a good class and then we're going to go over how to choose a good section. How to choose a good class is pretty simple. You go onto the website, right, for Hume or for Soch, and then you go through just all the different classes and you pick say three that you think you're interested in. And now I'm going to tell you a little bit about just some stereotypes that are associated with each class or just some like perceptions and generalizations. Keep in mind that when I was going to these classes versus you going into these classes, it's going to be entirely different because the professors are going to be different. For example, my reading cultures professor is no longer at U Chicago. I believe she transferred to another university. So it really is going to depend on your sections, but we'll talk about that in a later part. And I'm just going to go ahead and search up U Chicago Hume classes because I'm not super sure what they are right now. Okay, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine different Hume classes that you could pick from. Readings and world literature. I didn't really hear too much about this. I'm assuming it's just like a reading class and I don't think it's too difficult or too easy. Again, it'll depend on your professor. Philosophical Perspectives is very famous for being very theoretical, very like text heavy. There's a lot of reading, a lot of analysis. I remember my friend who was like living across me first year, he took this class and it was just a lot of like grinding over Aristophanes and a lot of like reading about morals. And if you're someone who did maybe Latin in high school or is more interested in philosophy, I would definitely recommend you to take this class. But if not, this is quite a reading intensive class. I think we're just like across the board. It's quite reading intensive. Next one is Greece and Rome, Text Traditions and Transformations. I had one friend who took this class and he personally chose it because he did a lot of Greek and Rome reading in high school and he really enjoyed it. But I've heard people say it's really difficult and I've heard people say it's not that difficult. So it really varies. I don't have too much to say about this one. And then we have Human Being and Citizen, HBC. HBC is a tough one because I've heard people say this class is really easy. Rather, specifically, the grading is quite easy because the readings that you're doing a lot more are a lot more philosophical, which mean that when you're writing, sometimes you're more able to get away with like, like pseudo-profound stuff rather than, you know, just like pure, like argumentative, like analysis, which is I think more of like a philosophical perspectives thing. Sometimes, most of the time though, I've heard things about it being like a pretty handleable class. Introduction to Humanities, I have no idea what this is, so I'm just gonna skip that. I mean, I'm not gonna comment on things I've never heard of. Reading Cultures, and that's my section, I've already covered it, but I really enjoyed it. I didn't learn too much from it, so that's my only caveat to not take it. And I've heard people actually have quite negative things to say about it, but my personal experience with it was great. Like I had a great professor, I liked my class a lot, and I really liked our reading, so there's that. Next one is media aesthetics. So, okay, so here's the deal. I've heard great things about media aesthetics, as in the grading is really easy, but because I did this pre-orientation course called uh, Methods of Argument and Discourse, and my wonderful instructor was Larry and he's like the head of like writing or the deputy head of writing or something like that at U Chicago. And he gave us like the insight tea on media aesthetics. And the reason why the grading is relatively easy is because the readings and what is expected in the course of the students is so high, like the bar is so high that the teachers and professors are kind of forced to to give you a bit more leeway and be more a bit be a bit more lenient with the grading just because if they actually hold you to the standard that like you're supposed to be at the entire class would just the grades would look terrible apparently and so that's the logic behind why some people find it really really easy in terms of grading but not easy at all in terms of class content so that's what i've heard i didn't take this class so take that with a grain of salt but that's what i heard for language and the human this is a class that if you're not really strong at literary analysis, people would take. It more focuses on like linguistics, the structure of language. You read more research paper-like texts rather than just, you know, like literature, like reading cultures, which I took focuses entirely on literature and fiction and some nonfiction. So yeah, Poetry in the Human, I have not heard too much about this as well, but I'm assuming it's quite similar to Language in the Human in that it's more of a focus on poetry. These are just kind of like the different classes, right? And so how do you get all of these generalizations and all of these like different things that you heard and said about all of these different classes? The way I did it was primarily to two ways. One way is by reaching out to alumni, to upperclassmen like me. But of course, try to find someone who's a little bit closer to your age. Like if you're an incoming freshman, maybe ask someone in class of 23. I mean, technically I am class of 23 now because I'm taking a gap year, but I mean like 
actually class of 23 because they're the ones who have taken these classes most recently so I would suggest reaching out to the alumni no matter who they are or wherever they're from just ask them about what they think are some good classes to take for Hume or Socia things like that my biggest resource was honestly the WeChat groups if you are like a Chinese student or someone coming from like Asia and you use WeChat try to get into the U Chicago class of like 2023 2024 WeChat groups because they are so useful you have people asking just straight up like oh I'm thinking of taking this section with this professor what do you guys think has anyone heard of this before and so many alumni will respond including myself and I think that's just a great atmosphere but of course not everyone uses WeChat but I do think that there are like WhatsApp groups as well as Facebook groups so if you're not in one of these like social media groups definitely try to find your way into them if not you can always comment down below or reach out to someone who might be in one of these groups or just ask in like the Facebook group chat and someone will probably pull you in and you can start doing your research and the final method is just simply by going online, going to the class review. There's like a class evaluations tab uh, underneath every class and every professor. Go read that for the classes you're interested in and try to get a sense of how the class is like under the specific professor from past students evaluations. Now, I would do the same thing for Hume, for Soch, but the reason why I chose to give you guys like the breakdown for different classes for Hume is because I do think that Hume is mandatory for first years to take. Well, Soch, a lot of people take it second year, um, but I would recommend you to take it first year because first year is definitely a lot more chill than second, third, and fourth year. Like it's only gonna get more difficult, guys. It's not gonna get easier. On to why I decided to take bio. I t chose metabolism and exercise, which I heard was going to be an easy class, very low entry level, did not need any prior biology knowledge. But after struggling through the class, I've realized that this class is a lot more difficult than people made it out to be. There was a lot more just like a lot of information, a lot of like brute memorization. I mean, I still did fine in the class. I like grinded, studied hard, got like a B plus, A minus. You have to put in at least like 20 to 30 hours before each exam. And you have to take notes consistently every class. So I didn't take core bio. And I mean, this is something that everyone knows. So I'll just tell you guys here. But everyone knows that core bio by this professor called Fineschi, or Fineschi is the easiest class for core bio. The reason is because she allows you uh, to bring in a cheat sheet and it can be any material and it's like A4 size and I don't think it's open book but you can bring in a cheat sheet which is the whole point point. and that apparently has helped a lot of people I've still seen on like current WeChat group chats that people are still getting A's from her class however it is incredibly difficult to get into her class like it is absolutely insane even if you put it first on your pre-registration list it's very difficult to get into her class and she only teaches for very specific quarters so my overall advice to you is don't gun for these like super easy professors, right? Like there's not really any point, like you're here to learn. And if you find a specific section really, really difficult, try to always just switch out and drop into another section. Don't pick a specific course just for the professor. Don't do that. I chose metabolism and exercise over trying to go for core bio and finesse and I absolutely do not regret it. Ultimately, very few people actually got into our class and more importantly, I was just quite interested in metabolism and exercise. Like our labs were just like running on a treadmill or writing down what you ate for a week and the labs were really chill. It's just the exams that were not super chill. But overall, the grade average was still pretty high. One section was curved, one, sec one quarter was not curved. So I love the not curved one a lot more than I like the curved one. But yeah, that's about that's about it for bio. And of course I took math because everyone takes math. Now, some people may be asking me like, oh, why did you take 152? So I had the option to take 161, which is like the honors level, like the higher level math class. And the reason why I didn't take 161 was just to put it simply, I didn't need it. And I didn't want to burden myself with another unnecessarily difficult math class because I'm an econ major and yes, you need math but not like calculus math you need like stats and the ability to use data and r studios and python and stuff so i really just didn't want to to do 161 math however the advice i've heard is that if you are interested in becoming like a professor or doing like a math major or like a like a quantitative anything any kind of like more quantitative major like a stem major definitely takes 161 and try it out for like a week or two and if you really can't handle it you can always drop back down to the 150s yeah that's my little spiel on how i chose my classes and i guess the last thing i just wanted to touch on really quickly is keep in mind what you want to do first year so the reason why i didn't you know choose a more difficult math class i didn't want to overpile myself with like my econ major stuff first year just yet is because i wanted to take the time to get to know the campus to get to know the people and more importantly also to apply to clubs you guys may not know this or some of you may know this very well but not all clubs are just you know free to enter 
like no barrier most of the clubs that you might want to get into as an econ major and specifically as someone who's interested in finance or business have like multiple rounds which means you need to submit applications you need to get your resume ready you need to go to interviews it's just a lot of stuff especially if you want to rush for like a frat a business frat a sorority you definitely need to make time for that it's kind of like another class looking back now i did kind of stack up my schedule a lot just because i did mon and then I also like did a bunch of clubs and I had four classes. I definitely know some people who took three classes, but my personal recommendation for you is to take four classes because you get through your degree faster and later on you have more options to take the classes that you actually like. And in case you want to graduate early, it's there for you. You also get rid of that pressure of in third or fourth year having to take four classes when you don't want to. Like for example, in my third year, I am fully ready to just take like three classes for two quarters because I've been taking like four classes and sometimes five classes in my second year. And so I can like chill a little bit as a third and fourth year and I, and I really like that option. So I would recommend you to take four classes if you are able to. Let's put it this way. I would rather you take four classes and some of them being a little easier for you to handle along with all the other stuff rather than take three classes that are very very insane and difficult because if you have four classes you can always drop one but for three classes if you want to add a class i always find that that's a lot more difficult because you have to look for specific sections and these classes might conflict with your current timing it's just a very messy so i would always suggest registering for four classes and planning for four classes and if you really can't handle one then just drop one it's fine. That's about it. Hopefully this gave you a bit of an insight. I know I only really broke down the humanities one, but it's because if I wanted to go through every course and just like give you the tea on all of the different classes, I feel like that would just be a lot of work. And also what I find easy may not be the same as what you might find easy. What I find interesting and difficult may not be what you find interesting and difficult. But I would say overall, I really like the way I chose my classes first year and I definitely don't regret it. It made my second year classes like class choice selection so much easier because I could just focus on my major and then take like an art class here and there or take like a civ class here and there and it just made me feel a lot more relaxed about my course choices. Yeah. That's about, that's about it. Yeah, if you guys have any specific questions regarding like classes or regarding anything I said in this video, please go ahead and comment them down below. If you are a class of 2023 person, like an actual class of 2023 person, go ahead and contradict anything I said about like the difficulty of classes because I am not up to date to like the newest batch of like core professors. Um, so if you have any like new knowledge, please go ahead and comment them down below for the prospies or for like incoming freshmen to see. And yeah, that's about it for me. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video and hope this was somewhat helpful. Bye-bye!